known as if it's your livelihood, you know, here we go. Yeah. Well, yeah, you paid us two hundred dollar fine. You know, oh well, well, I'll just have to do that and comply. What do you have to hide, though? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you must be trying to hide something. Uh, you know, and that's it. And they don't bring again. They're not bringing any information to the table to say there is a problem in the taxidermy industry. No, but they'll create one. They'll you know create one. Yep. But you know, if you look at law enforcement, the industry of law enforcement, our troopers, our city police, and you get on the website and see how many. People of authority, enforcement authority, have been convicted for pornography, child abuse, prostitution. I mean, there's pages of it in our own state. But they don't want to fix that. DWIs. You know, should we make a law that says every law enforcement officer needs to blow in a breathalyzer before he gets in an automobile? Because, you know, one or two percent of the troopers got caught in a DWI. Well, what about the DWI law in the first place, which that's always a touchy subject, yeah. but aren't you prosecuting people for something that they might do? Well, you've you've made it a crime, so that, that what they're doing by right. driving drunk is a crime to begin with. Yeah. Right, but how is that a crime? Is that deterred drunk driving at all? No. It goes back to prohibition. The worst mm-hmm. alcoholism in America was during prohibition. Go figure. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, really, that's what this does come down to. An awful lot of this is that the, there are some people out there who believe they know better than the rest of us, and that the best way, of course, for us to behave is to do what they tell us. If restitution was to the victims instead of to the state for drunk driving, it would probably go away. If you based it on history, it absolutely would. And all the drunk driving laws have done what for drunk driving? Hmm. Not very much. Beyond not very much. Nothing. It it's, deters the... It deters, it deters the, the honest person trying to abide by the law. They filled our prisons is what they did. Yes. Yeah. And it sounds like you taxidermists are next on the list. Yeah, Al, and I'm going I'm to go out on the limb and say something here that might be taken very revolutionarily. And so uh, be careful, okay, I, because I will deny having said this. All right? <laughs> so, nobody can prove that I've said this. All right, ready? Al, I will support you in your business if you decide not to comply. Oh, yeah, and I think... Uh, I, you know, that's what I got to make a decision. But I think we're we're really making ground. We have several legislatures, uh, you know, backing us on this. They see the they see the uh, you know the realm, you know the illegalness of this. I guess I could say, for lack of better terms. Can I ask you to do me a favor, Al? Yes, sir. Can you say hi to Mike for me? Mike Anderson, when you go oh. to jail. Oh, when you get to jail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. and I'm a. Yeah, I guess I'm a activists anyways when it comes to you know the game side of the states yeah. and what they do and how they're doing it but you know now it's personally affecting me again is it showing a little bit al i think that uh, how powerless the legislators are i mean who has more power the commission or the legislature well currently right now it's it's looking like the commissioner does at, exactly. at this meeting and but i think the legislatures are going to try to throw their way you know election season's coming up so we're getting a lot of we're getting a lot of uh, participation in this from from uh, elected officials, and we do have you know a few good elected officials that see this stuff. So they're sure. they're they're sounding off, they're writing letters, they're making phone calls. And you gotta love the election season because it gets those guys out to yeah. maybe do something right at least for two weeks out of the two year term. I mean, they we have. had Tammy Wilson and Senator John Coghill, and I think it was mainly Tammy Wilson that got the commissioner to sit in front of twelve taxidermists and start questioning him you know what's sad is why is there any questioning going on at all legal said it's unconstitutional yeah should go out the door well i'll tell you End the story and it, and no it more came talking. right from the commissioner's mouth he says we don't believe in that that's you know that's what it does come down to is exactly the more, the more said, commissioners we, we have you know <laughs> it, it's all about that commissar yeah that's all i'm saying all right. You guys recognize the song? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Al, thank you so much right. for what you're doing. And you know what? I am serious about supporting your business, even if you have to go underground <laughs> to support. I will. I would. I would be glad to to engage in some illegal business with you. Yeah. All right. Keep, <laughs> us, keep us updated, Al. All right. right. I sure will. Four yeah. five eight dog is the number. I'm rock out the dare commissar for just a moment here. All right, four five eight talk the number. Good morning, caller. You're next on Patriots Lament. Who's this? Is that me? It might be. Depends on who it is. Uh, it's Monty. Monty, it's not you. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What's on your mind? A neat little thing to check out for not you guys probably already know about it, but on YouTube, 
there's a search you do called Don't Talk to Cops. It's two parts. Yeah. And that is a great YouTube site there. It's actually up video. on my Foreign or Tactical website, too. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, I, I watched it and was just amazed. Uh, you know, the info you get from that lawyer and the cop. And the cop tells you everything. You know, don't talk to them. Because we'll, we'll use everything in our means to prove it against you or, or use against you. I'm sorry, not prove. Use against you. And uh, there was some, a lot of great uh, great info on there and just something to put out to the public, you know. Not a lot of people. I didn't know about it until a, uh, a co-worker told me about it. And uh, it was pretty interesting, to say the least. All right. Thanks for that. Appreciate Thank the phone you. call. 458-TALK is the number. This is Patriots Lament. Good morning. Who's this? Good morning, Frank Cherry here. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. Believe it or not, I'm down in a ditch working here a little bit, but I just have something to say. We've got a little radio going here. I'm glad that the guys turned it up. Um, the real fear and injustice in the Michael Anderson case, if he's being represented by one of these public pretenders, what I call them public pretenders, that are bought and paid for by the state, uh, he's in trouble. Uh, is this the case? Is he still got a public pretender? Yes, we realize that, and we're working on an alternative form right now. Yeah, you've got to get rid of her. Uh, she's a lost cause. you got to realize that uh, uh, these, are, these people are in bed here with the judges and the lawyers and the prosecutors, these public pretenders. Another thing I want to bring up, September 5th next month, and that's Jury Race Day. Uh, every state there will be activists demonstrating the rights and powers of the jury to judge the law as well as the facts in front of state and federal courthouses. I, once again, I hope you enjoy uh, joining with me this year, September 5th. Where will you be? Well, September 5th is known as Jury Race Day. This will be about the 12th anniversary that the fully informed jury activists will be uh, demonstrating on uh, public sidewalks in front of courthouses, and we're allowed to, to demonstrate the power of the jury to judge the law as well as the facts and vote your conscience. As you know, the Sixth and Seventh Amendment are included in the Bill of Rights to preserve the right of trial by jury, which in turn conveys upon the jury's responsibility to defend all other individual rights named in or implied in by the U.S. Constitution and its amendments along with all those rights, we're intended the responsibility. And therefore, I, Walter J. Hickel, Governor of the State of Alaska, hereby proclaim September 5th, and that was in 1992, Jury Rights Day. And then Sarah Palin, whether you like her or not, she did her homework when it comes to the history of jury nullification. Two years in a row, she introduced proclamations regarding the power of the jury. But Sean Parnell the weak one, I say the weak one, for the second year in a row, he refused to uh, put a proclamation out regarding the power of the jury. So, once again, the Republicans have failed to do their job. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Frank, for the call. You know, I, uh, you guys off the, coast, uh, the top of your head, do you know what day Constitution Day is? Every day. Okay, well, <laughs> specifically, it's September 17th. That was the day that the Constitution was signed, September 17th, 1787. So is that the day and, they follow and, it? Well, Constitution Day <laughs> is the day that it is officially recognized, although it is officially observed this year on September 16th. Guess what has been planned for September 17th this year? May Day. No. The American Day of Rage, in which they are planning on uh, taking over Wall Street with uh, protests. Kind of an interesting, you oh, know, yeah, the, that is kind of interesting. Yeah, just something something to kind of uh, put it, put in the, the back burner or something to think about. I think Frank had a good point there about our governor being weak. Uh, we've got two things that we've talked about already today. One, Michael Anderson being in jail. That's, hey, hey, Mr. Governor, that's one of your citizens you're supposed to be protecting. What are you doing about it? Hello? Cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> you're, you're there. You were given, quote, unquote, power by the people to protect us. You have one of your citizens that we know of for sure in jail unjustly. Wait, what wait. are you doing about it? Isn't he the governor? Isn't he there to govern us? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, that's what it's come down to. I mean, originally, the only reason, um, you know, we have obviously these quotes that uh, my kids quote on your show during the week, and they do on our show. And the only justification for government, if there is any at all, was to protect the private property rights and the rights of the people in that community. That's the only reason why they put them in there. It was just like, hey, let's collectively have someone protecting us. And we see where that's gotten us. But I thought I don't they know. were hey, there to, get, to build us libraries that fall down and, and to give us police that want more money. And Hey, Governor, your commissioner said he doesn't really give a crap about the Constitution. What are you going to do about well, it? Well, the other, the other thing with they're supposed to protect the private property rights of the private individual. Uh, the state always prosecutes crimes against itself to a much greater extent than crimes against other mundanes. Which, and, you, and we've been asking that question on the show ever since it started several months ago, is that well, at, at what point exactly does the state have any crimes against itself anyway? Well, yeah, that goes back to Josh's question, who is the state, right? Right. 